MPs will vote on the Brexit bill today, and if it goes through, that paves the way for Theresa May to tr trigger Article 50, possibly tomorrow. But some big names are rebelling against Mrs May, and they don't come much bigger than former Deputy Prime Minister Lord Heseltine. He was sacked from his government job. The same Parliament should have the final say on Brexit, and he joins us now live from Oxfordshire. Welcome Morning. to you, uh, Lord Heseltine. So you've been sacked, but you're not Morning taking this lying down. I want to play a clip to our viewers of what you said. Oh, we don't have it. We, we, I was going to remind people of what you said about Boris Johnson yesterday, who said we shouldn't fear having no deal. You said that was a load of rubbish. Explain to us why you believe Theresa May's got this wrong. Well, it's difficult to know where to start. We fought a campaign. Every prime minister that I've worked for, I don't know quite a lot of them, has told the British people that our future was uh, completely interwoven with that of our continental neighbours. Every, not every, but virtually every company that I've ever discussed the matter with tells me that they want certainty about our relationship with their biggest market. And the younger generation who have been in contact with me and many people are appalled that they're being sort of cut off with no certainty from a community, the European community, in which they feel very happy and in which they know their future will depend. Right, but let me ask you this. I mean, do, you, do you play cards, Lord Heseltine? Do you play poker, stuff like that? <laughs> Badly. <laughs> OK, but you, you do play. When you play poker, do you show everyone around the table your cards? Every hand? Or do you oh, keep no, stuff no, to I'm, yourself? I've, I've, sorry, let me, let me make it clear. Uh, I have made it absolutely clear that I don't think that Theresa May should reveal her hand. That would be naive. Of course, the people who want her to do that are the Brexiteers, because they're frightened that there'll be some sort of compromise and they want to be able to shout loud to stop it happening. But the fact is their position is naive. It's naive in two ways, actually. First of all, they want her to reveal her hand so they can criticise it. But secondly, they don't seem to understand that it's not what we want. It's what the Europeans will give us. I don't like saying that, but the truth of the matter is we're the ones leaving the club. Yeah. And the club will say what the new rules will be. Well, hang on, I don't hang like on, putting sorry. my hang country on. into Lord that position. Hang on. This sounds incredibly defeatist from a man of your stature. Just rolling over and letting the Europeans dictate how we should now lead our lives going forward? Where's the great lion of the jungle no, no, who would have stood no, up no, to these no, people? No, no, no. no. So, so you're putting you're putting words into my mouth. I didn't say they will determine how we go forward. I said they will determine what deal we get. And as our interests are so interwoven with them, our position to it, demand is simply based on hope and Lord not he reality. Lord Heseltine, how worried are you that those negotiating on behalf of the EU will try and set an example of the UK doing this divorce, that by punishing us, that would put off other countries who may want to leave. Do you think that that will be a factor in the EU negotiators' minds? I, I think it's the red line which they won't cross. They have... I think we have to understand that ever since the end of the Second World War, creating a unity of political action, cultural action, economic action in Europe has been a vision. You may not agree with that, but that's what they feel. And they will hold that line in any reasonable way they can. So the idea that they will allow us to go out and set a precedent which sets a sort of domino effect of others following is simply not going to happen. But we, but we have, don't we? We have very strong bargaining chips ourselves in all this process. And I would, you know, playing devil's advocate with your position, to simply say that it does sound slightly defeatist. It's like they hold all the cards. We have to basically go along with how the European Union wants us to divorce. But in any divorce battle, there's to and fro, and both sides have cards to play. Britain is not a weak country. Britain's one of the leading yeah. members of the European Piers, Union. Sorry, you've missed the key. 
Piers, you've missed the key point. In the end, there's a court of law to which the two parties to divorce can go. There is no court of law to which we can go. Well there, well, there is, in the sense of there is the court of the rest of the world. You know, we do have the option of simply ah, doing no okay. deal. This, this is, well, 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 is, OK, but let me this, just ask, let me phrase this, the question yeah. correctly. On this question of no deal, is it not a good negotiating position over the next two years that we make the European Union think or believe that we are absolutely prepared to go away with no deal? Is that not just common sense? You can tell them, but they read our newspapers, they talk to our politicians, they follow Parliament, and they know that that's not our view.